How's it going guys? Root of the Null here coming back at you with the thread module and in the last video we actually finally made our own thread. We called it pretty simple our thread and its target, the function in the code that we actually wanted to run was do this and what it would do is it would just print out this is our thread. Okay so that's awesome. We started the thread and it ran. If we actually look at this in the code uh, in the, uh, the function the programs execution Python us threading. If we run this, this is our thread, and sometimes active count can see it, sometimes it can't see the other thread. So let's experiment with this a little more. What if we wanted to go ahead and say while true pass? You guys know what this will do, right? This will be stuck in an infinite loop doing nothing. <laughs> so if we run this in the code, this is our thread. There are two threads running right now. Our program can see it. Oh, I just went to my desktop, sorry. And uh, here, I'll move that back over. This is our thread. It's two right there because it sees that this thread is still running and it also sees that everything is happening right now. I don't know if you can hear my processor, my computer running really freaking out right now. I'm going to open up my system monitor and I will show you in the process. If I look at the CPU, you can see Python's right there. It's taking up 12% of my CPU right now. If we look at it in the CPU history, we can see, boom, something is skyrocketing. CPU 3 is going ham right now. <laughs> and uh, it's trying to keep track of that thread that is still, right now, as we speak, infinitely doing nothing. Well, why hasn't it ended yet, right? Well, keep in mind in our code, it's going to keep doing this forever. While 1 is equal to 1, while true, that's, that's going to happen forever. We can't, I can't close out of this. I can't control C to stop it. What the heck's going on? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kill that uh, that that program. P kill Python. If I jump back over there, okay, it's terminated. Freaking finally. Thank God. If I look over at my system monitor now, do I still have the thing open? I don't even know. <laughs> system monitor right here. Thankfully, the CPU has quieted down right now. There's a little bit, a uh, little bit more serenity. <laughs> and Python is not going crazy right now. Nothing too bad. Well, what the heck just happened, right? Our thread was going ham. So let me let me let me check something out right here. If I actually okay, I'm I'm just making sure my notes are still visible and everything. What I want to show you guys is how you can terminate a thread, or at least one way that you can terminate a thread. When we get later on in the tutorial, I'll show you something really cool that's part of the threading module that does pretty much exactly the same sort of functionality that we're just going to build or at least pretend right now. What if we had a global variable? What if we had something in main that we're just going to call switch? And actually, what if we called it dead? <laughs> it's Halloween, sort of. Halloween was a few days ago, whatever. Dead is going to equal true. And the thread that we're running, the actually the actual do this function, we're going to use that same global dead variable, and we're going to say while not dead, do freaking everything. So it starts that thread, it starts to do this thread all on its own, and we don't have to worry about it. Then we keep going through all the code that we're executing right over here, and what if we wanted to just say raw input, hit enter, to die. <laughs> Pretty gruesome, or, or whatever. But once we hit enter, dead can equal true. Oh, sorry, dead over here should be false. We don't want to start off dead. We want to be alive. And that way, <clears throat> this function will keep going for infinity, whatever. But once we hit enter, dead will stop. And that'll tell this thread, because it knows, that, okay, the global variable it has been changed. Now we can stop and... It's just going to return out of this function, which means that the thread will stop, which means that our program will finally close, right? Let's take a look at this. If I run Python us threading, this is our thread, number two. There are two threads going on. That's active count. You can see the main thread, our actual program, and you can see the thread that we started, which is do the do this function. The current thread is the main thread, and if I say hit enter to die, once I hit the enter key, awesome, I get back to my prompt. We just sort of wrote a little switch, or a little, little, a little, little thing, <laughs> a little thing that is going to tell the thread when to stop. Awesome. All it took is a global variable, right? Well, yeah. All right. 
I mean, maybe that's a waste of our space. But it's one way to do it. It's one way to tell a function, tell a thread, to stop running. What if we create an integer variable like x, an integer variable, and uh, let's say while we're not dead, we're just going to go ahead and plus equal 1, add to x, and then when we're done infinitizing, <laughs> that should totally be a word, infinitizing, we're just going to display what x turned out to be. So if I run this now, this is our thread, it's counting, right now it's counting. If I hit enter, that's a pretty big value for x. What if I hit enter immediately, it's a smaller value for x, because obviously the thread wasn't running as long. But die, the dead variable, that's what we're using to tell the thread to stop. Shut up. Stop counting. No one cares anymore. <laughs> You're dead to me. To everyone. <laughs> and that's the way it is. That's one way that we can terminate a thread. Typically, a thread won't terminate until the function returns. And if we're in an infinite loop, if we did, like, you know, while true, like we had earlier, it's just going to keep doing this forever. And our program will never close and it will never end. So, we need to be able to terminate threads. We're going to get into a simple way to do this later with the threading module called events. And that kind of does pretty much the same thing of what we just built, but it doesn't have to use a global variable, because it'll be a variable that the threading module keeps track of all on its own. Okay, I think that's enough for this function, for this, <laughs> for this function, for this tutorial and for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.